The next unit we're going to take a look at are vector operations. We're going to give ourselves some new uh, tools and techniques for working with vectors. The first of which we're going to take a look at is the dot product. As we saw in the last chapter, adding and subtracting vectors algebraically was pretty straightforward. However, when it comes to multiplying vectors, it doesn't have a good interpretation. In order to do so, we're going to define a new technique called the dot product that will give us some sense as to what it might mean to multiply vectors. The first definition we're going to give for the dot product will be this. If we're given vectors a and b, the dot product will be equal to uh, the x component of a times the x component of b added to the, x, the y component of a times the y component of b. If we were dealing with vectors in higher dimension, we would just continue this pattern on and on. An alternative definition for the dot product uh, is, is this. If we know the magnitude of A, and if you haven't seen this notation before, the double of bars around a vector refers to its magnitude. That means that the dot product of A can also be defined as the length of A times the length of B times cos theta. Well, what is this theta that we're referring to? The theta that we're referring to is the angle between vectors. Uh, anytime we're referring to the angle between vectors, what we mean is if we join the vectors tail to tail and measure the angle from one to the other. Let's take a look at a simple example of how this might be used. If we have vector a, which is two, uh, 1, 2, and vector b, which is minus 1, 1, and we wanted to find out the dot product, we could plug into our formula, either formula, but in this case it would be easier to use formula 1. Uh, we determine that the, the dot product is 1. Now this may or may not be intuitive. Uh, the dot product is, is hard to interpret in some, situ in some situations. The best situation to see what this actually might mean is let's consider what would happen if we dotted a vector with itself, so a dot a. Well, if we sub into each of these formulas, we can come up with an important relationship. If we sub into our first formula, we would have the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos of the angle between them. Well, any two of the same vector will have an angle between them of zero because of the same. Cos of zero is one, which means that we we'll end up with the dot product being equal to the magnitude squared. Let's take a look at what would happen if we subbed into the other formula. If we subbed into the other formula here, we would see that we would get ax squared plus ay squared. Um, and combining these two formulas, we end up with this result. Hopefully this looks familiar to all of you. This looks exactly like the Pythagorean theorem. This tells us that the magnitude of a in, uh, in any dimension is actually just the square of each of its components. This will be important for problems in our homework. Another application of the dot product that we can make use, use of are projections. We read this as the projection of a onto b. Well, what does this mean? What this means is if we're given a vector a and a vector b, the projection would be as if we took a and cast a shadow onto b. We can see where this comes from, because if we had the dot product by itself and b was a unit vector, or had length 1, what this formula would look like is uh, the magnitude of a times cos theta, which hopefully you all recognize that from our simple trigonometry is that would be the length of, the com uh, of vector a in the b direction. In general, for this formula, b does not need to be a unit vector, hence where these other scalars come from, um, <coughs> and we can use this to solve problems such as shadows. We'll see several examples of this in our homework. Next, let's take a look at the cross product. Unlike the previous example of the dot product, where the result that came out was a scalar and not a vector, this time the cross product, which we sometimes refer to as the vector product, will return a vector. Also unlike the dot product, where uh, it didn't necessarily have the best geometric interpretation, the cross product has a very good interpretation. If you take a vector a and a vector b and you calculate the cross product, what this returns is the normal to vectors a and b. Well, what does normal mean? Normal means perpendicular. So this third vector that we produce will be perpendicular to both a and b. It's important to note that the cross product isn't defined for uh, uh, dimensions other than three um, because we cannot define a, a unique vector in other dimensions that is perpendicular to the first two. The, the formula that we're going to use for the cross product will be this one. This might look a little intimidating at first, but it's actually quite straightforward once you get the hang of it. Uh, as a sanity check, we'll take a look at each of the individual terms. We'll notice that the x term for the cross product doesn't involve any components from the x values of uh, a and b. 
in, in the same way that the y component doesn't involve either's y component, and the same with z. Another formula that we may find useful is that uh, because this is a vector, it also has a magnitude. So the magnitude of the cross product will actually be the magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of the angle between them. Again, the angle between them referring to the, the angle that's measured from one vector to the other when they're joined tail to tail. Let's take a quick look at how we would apply this. So if we have two vectors here, A, which is 1, 0, minus 1, and B, which is 0, 2, minus 1, if we sub into this formula and reduce, we end up with a vector that looks like this, 2, 1, 2. Interestingly, uh, this is the normal, and if we were to actually apply the dot product, if we were to dot this vector with either of these, we would get zero. This is because if you remember from the formula from the dot product, we saw that it was cos of the angle between them, and if two things are perpendicular, the angle between them is 90, thus the dot product will be zero. You will find both of these techniques useful uh, in your homework. Good luck.